Okay, today we're going to take a look at just doing some editing using the Tiny MCE uh, plugin editor uh, with CMS Made Simple. So, going to look at some of the key functions that uh, you're most likely to perform with that. So, I'm going to start off by going to the pages, content pages. And on this particular project, uh, let's see if we can pull up something that's an actual page of interest. Um, Crystal Lake Resort. Okay, so we're going to see some of the um, other controls and things that you can select um, for um, your options within that page. Setting the parent, setting your title, your menu text. These are all things that would be covered under uh, pages information. In this case, we've actually set so we can select images that are within a certain folder uh, to be used um, as the banner images for some of these pages. So, um, And then we're into the bulk of the editor. In this particular case, we have two different fields um, for editing. One is the main content listed here. And the other one is a sidebar listed here. Uh, a lot of the functions are going to be similar to really any word editing program. Um, or software for that matter. Um, your bold, italic, underline, strike through. So those are just for if you want to change a given word. They only happen on a um, whatever you've highlighted. Um, so inline elements. And there we go. As opposed to some of the things that will happen <clears throat> with block level elements like a paragraph and stuff like that. So just to get familiar with the toolbar itself, um, there is a cut. So if we had that highlighted and select cut, uh, well, it's letting me know that it won't for that particular uh, browser, uh, but with some it will. Um, we have different paste buttons. The one that I encourage you to use at all times is actually the paste is plain text. This gets rid of any um, hidden code within what's been pasted to the clipboard uh, so we don't end up trying to troubleshoot uh, whatever has been left behind typically by um, Microsoft Word but even from emails sometimes we'll get some uh, illegal characters or other um, instructional code coming over with that. The copy button again we'll see it may not work uh, because of the browser compatibility but yeah as I thought we're doing paste different deal so with the paste you've actually copied from word or wherever your source is your source document uh, when this opens up you use control V to paste it into the document and then you hit insert uh, keeping the line breaks is uh, checked by default usually leave that on uh, then we've got our paragraph alignment so left center right and justified You'll notice if we just have our cursor within that um, block, if I do justified, it applies to that entire paragraph. If I click on it again, it takes it off. Um, styles, we don't use too much of um, in this particular project. And then we've got our block level elements. Um, so paragraph, if we move our cursor to the very first heading, it says heading one. If I change it to heading two, so on and so forth. Um, it changes things within the style. Now these are just um, basic representations that it is a different block level uh, element. But the styling will be consistent. All heading ones will look the same on the site. All heading twos will look the same on the site, so on and so forth. Uh, just things that we do to try and make it um, easier to work with um, and a little more consistent throughout the site. Uh, we have bullets, um, both a, unordered list and an ordered list. Uh, you can put in a horizontal line. What is that? Well, let's just pop one in. So there we go. We get one. We do have a little undo button to remove things if we uh, don't like what just happened. You could also pop an indent and that's going to happen again on the block level. We've got some extra little buttons over here for linking. So if we were going to link to a website, you have to highlight text or an image first. 
click on that little link button, type in the address for where it's going to go to. Typically, if it's going to an external site, uh, we recommend setting the target as open a new window. And then hit insert and it is done. The link is added. Uh, all that's left to do is hit the uh, submit or apply at the bottom and you're on your way. Um, now, if you want to link to a page within the website, um, similar step, but don't click on the insert link button. Click on this one. And this one, let's see if we get the uh, text queue, insert link to CMS page, CMS MS page. So we click on that. Here's a list of all the pages on the site. So we can say, oh, well, we want to put in a link to Crystal Lake Resort. Now, notice that it just kind of popped it here. It went wherever the cursor was because I didn't have something selected. So I'm going to undo again. Select that. And this time, it's actually converting the text that I highlighted into the link. Remove that. Um, and if we, well, I guess we could, the other way to remove a link, have your cursor in it and cl just click the uh, unlink button. The anchor tag, uh, don't use it too often and I'm going to save that because it's uh, it doesn't handle it as cleanly as I'd like. If we were inserting or editing an image, um, in this particular case we do have an image. Notice how we have a right click context menu as well. So insert edit image. Uh, let's see if we can get it again. Clicking on the wrong one, pardon me. There we go. So it's listing the image. If I wanted to change it, I click on this little browse button. It allows me to go and take a look at the images that we currently have uploaded to the server. In this particular case, I'm using uh, thumbs, destinations. There's one for the Crystal Lake, which is exactly the same image. I can put a description and a title, recommended especially for um, SEO reasons. Uh, alignment, this one's aligned off to the right of the page. Um, I did assign a class to these. I've put in a vertical and a horizontal space. This just gives us a little breathing room around the image. Constraint proportions is checked. It's already pulling in the right dimensions for the image. Um, but under the class, I said with border, so W border. And that will actually automatically apply um, a border around that image uh, that's going to be consistent for every other image that you apply that class to. Then we just hit update and it would make the changes for us. Uh, in addition, if we had special symbols like a copyright symbol or something else, using this tool just ensures it's a proper character encoding. Um, so if we had a registered trademark, we click on that, it's going to give us the exact symbol that we uh, need to represent that. Uh, we do have some color and background color elements. Uh, usually, uh, I'll be honest with you, we turn those off with most sites uh, and I will probably um, turn that off with this site as well. Um, again, it's just too tempting, uh, especially if you've got more people in there editing. Oh, well, I'm going to change the color. Um, and that it can make things um, really inconsistent throughout the entire site. And same with the background color, we'll take that one out as well. If you feel that your window is too small for your editing, there's a neat little toggle full screen mode. You click on that, it just gives you a bigger window to edit. Then you can go ahead and do your editing when you're done. You click that again so you can then get back to be able to do your submit or save. Okay, so that's just a quick run through with Tiny MCE and doing some basic editing features.